industry names. And you can treat this to be very similar to how you see BGP confederations, where you may have you know, a few span tree networks, but then you have smaller span tree networks within those networks. So it kind of makes them more like confederations. Uh, but overall, rapid span tree is what you use. It's just a really a simple one-line command that you input. And the span tree operation is automatic. It just takes place. It is also recommended not to disable span tree. The most common thing that people say is, well, span tree is slow. I need to disable it. How do I do it? Um, you really can disable it, though. But when people say that it's slow, uh, basically, it's coming down to the next thing, which is the span tree states that whenever something is plugged into a port, you're going to see that it's going to be like this little orange color, this little amber color. And during this time, it's going through like this 30 second phase, in typical cases in terms of P uh, PVST, where it's listening, it's learning. And during this process, you have no network connectivity. After this process completes, it will put that particular port into a forwarding state where you can forward, you know, data, traffic, that sort of thing, or it puts into a blocking state to prevent loops on the network. So what you can do is for servers or desktops or anything that's a node device, you want to enable a feature called PortFast. And PortFast, or if you enable it, anything plugged into that port automatically goes into a forwarding state. That's it. You're all done. So do not disable span tree. The question of the concern is the ability to use port fast to make all the appropriate host ports automatically automatically forwarding upon connection. It's not recommended. One of the dangers besides BTP, but with span tree is the very painful thing called broadcast storms. That when span tree is disabled and when something's plugged in and it's trying to broadcast information on, I'm trying to know how to get from point A to point B. And it's going to start building up its CAM table. A lot of forwarding happens. And doing so, resources are consumed in terms of CPU. And that's an example where um, networks completely go down. I mean, I've seen broadcast storms happen, and within seconds, the entire network is, un is unaccessible. And uh, it's funny, though, because this is definitely the Achilles heel for a lot of network engineers is span and tree. Um, they are frightened of span and tree. They want to do layer three as much as possible. And I don't blame them. I mean, that definitely makes sense in a lot of cases. But the issue is knowing how to configure span and tree and some of those protocols behind it. One thing to know about span and tree is that span and tree happens um, per VLAN. So if I have 10 VLANs, um, then the span tree operation that we talk about in the picture in the next slide, that that span tree happens on each particular slide or each particular VLAN. So this is an example up here very quick that this is here. You have two switches back to back. Here you can see that there is no loop involved. They're just directly connected. Below here, we see four switches kind of connected together, and they are participating in a loop. So span tree uh, will notice this, and it will do its appropriate operation to start blocking down these ports, or one particular port that's going to break the loop. For example, it may say that this particular port needs to be blocked. So some of the span tree components are this. That, they, that all these switches upon startup, um, they all have what we call a bridge identifier or a bid that consists of a priority and the default priority is 32768 and they all have a MAC address. So basically the lower priority or lowest MAC address is chosen for some of the following. During the span tree operation, the first thing that is chosen is a root bridge. And the root bridge is basically deciding a single switch. What is the single switch that will be the root bridge, the root of our particular span tree network? And this is happening again per VLAN. And that's determined by the lowest priority, or if the priorities are the same, it will choose the one with the lowest MAC address. 
Next it chooses the root port and the root port is chosen on the other switches. So if this is the root bridge, then these switches, one port is chosen as the root port and that is the port closest to the root bridge. And basically it takes consideration of the path which is considering the cost. And if this is gigabit or 10 gig, uh, basically that will make a difference on what that root cost would be. Then on all the individual segments, as I call them, like in this case, we have four segments, it will determine which end is considered as the designated port and which end is considered as the non-designated port. So by default, if this is the root bridge, both of these will be DP ports. And the other ports will very likely be RP or root ports. So these are the operations that happens. First determines the root bridge, then it determines the root port, then it determines the appropriate applicable DP and NDP ports. We have a separate video that talked about this process in more detail within one of our training packages for LAN, for LAN switching under our training section. So those are the major components on how span tree will work to determine which ports need to be blocked. And it does that on a per VLAN basis. Let's talk about some of the hardware here. So there are a wide variety of hardware using Cisco as an example. Juniper has uh, switching hardware, Foundry, Force 10 also has switching hardware. And a lot of these could be applicable in terms of some of the capabilities. So on, so one of the lowest ones on, in terms of for small and SMB businesses is the Cisco Catalyst 500 Express. This is recommended for small and SMB businesses. It only provides layer two capabilities such as VLANs and trunking. It's a fixed um, it's a fixed switch where you can have things such as 24 ports, but it only has a GUI interface. You cannot get into it via a command line interface. Moving up, we have the Cisco Calis 2960 series, which is recommended for small and SMB businesses, which also provides only layer two capabilities and is also considered as a fixed switch, which could be 24 or 48 ports. The Cisco Catalyst 2975 series actually is the new one added to the Cisco collection that is recommended for small SMB, provides layer 2, but is considered as a stack technology. So I can have multiple of these 2975 switches kind of stacked together and they are treated as one logical switch. And if you're using this for, LAN, for your LAN access, that's definitely recommended to avoid daisy chained networks, which is completely not recommended. Moving ahead, we have the Cisco Calis 3560 series, and this is probably more aimed for SMB or medium. Doesn't mean that a small business cannot use this, but what makes it unique is it has layer two and also layer three capabilities where I can do routing such as EIGRP or even OSPF. This is also as a fixed